I think to me being disruptive, um, it means uh, doing things differently, fairly obviously, but crucially it means that you then set the agenda that other people try and copy or mimic or follow suit. Disruption isn't just uh, doing things in a different way that then doesn't resonate or go any further or becomes a one-off because that's more of a gimmick. So being disruptive is about changing the game and I think that's where Copper 90 are proud to have so many people who perhaps mimic them or copy them or hold them in such high regard that they try and look to be a bit like them. It provides entirely new challenges of course because to be continually disruptive you need to continually stay ahead of that chasing pack but that's also the exciting reason people like us are involved with a business like this to try and do that, to try and continue to innovate but in a way that continues to build audience and satisfy the kind of hungry appetites of a fan. For me, being disruptive means taking a look at uh, an industry or a way of doing things which is set in stone, which perhaps hasn't changed in years and years, finding a way to do it differently that gives you an advantage over the incumbents. Being disruptive means looking at a problem with a new perspective and finding a different solution through that new perspective. So the way that we do that here at Unmade is by having a team full of lots of people from lots of different backgrounds. So although we're solving a problem within the knitting industry, we have people who are engineers, physicists, fashion designers and also other creators all working together. Most markets have two or three big entrenched players in them and a disruptive brand goes in, sees a new opportunity, a new proposition in the market that it can either deliver distinctive value or do something that's already being done but do it so much better to create disruption in that market and value for the user. The idea originally of disruption was that there are unmet market needs that incumbents can't address because they've grown so broad in their approach to the market that they're missing those fundamental pockets of needs that a new entrant comes, identifies that specific thing that they want to serve, and they do that more effectively, with more focus, better, cheaper, and so on. I think a disruptive idea really is the thing that changes people's habits. And I think um, that can be really powerful. So you, you see people taking Uber rides to take Uber rides. That's a total habitual change. Um, but at Push Doctor, what we're actually doing is that kind of next level of disruption. It's how do we save people's lives, not just how do we change them. For Pat, disruption means taking a look at existing coffee brands and existing retail uh, and consumer needs and seeing if we can meet those needs better than they're being met by, by incumbents in the market. I think you can only be uh, deemed properly disruptive if it then sets the agenda, if you like, if it then causes other brands or uh, other properties to kind of follow suit, realising that that way of doing things is perhaps the new way of doing things and the right way of doing things. I think to be a disruptor in today's ever-evolving world, you really need to not be afraid to take a risk. Um, you know, some of the best innovators and disruptors in the world have just had that passion, tenacity and vision um, and have never kind of deviated away from the true core of their business. They've seen an area in the market that kind of needs to change or the customer experience needs to change. Um, brands such as Airbnb, Uber, I think are perfect examples of where, you know, an industry has changed, someone's come in, disrupted and completely turned that industry on its head. 17 years ago, Salesforce um, disrupted the software market by wanting to make enterprise software as easy and simple as buying a book on Amazon. 